In this video, we look at another method for solving linear systems of equations using matrices. The method's called Gaussian elimination. So if you've already seen the Kramer's rule video, you'll, noticed, you'll have noticed that it's a determinant method and it relies on calculating a lot of determinants. The, more, the bigger the system, the more determinants you have to calculate and it's generally inefficient. In fact, sometimes it even fails to work at all. So what else can we do? Well, in this video, we introduce a matrix version of what you might remember as the substitution, elimination and rearranging methods from just regular old algebra, which you may have used on two equations with two unknowns, or maybe even three. Gaussian, Gaussian elimination involves applying what are called specific elementary row operations to a matrix, and these are equivalent to those sort of substitution and elimination and rearranging ideas. And they make the uh, matrix equation easier to solve. Back substitution involves taking one part of a solution and using it to go back and find other parts. If you've already seen the video where we first talked about linear systems of equations, we actually did some back substitution there when we turned a set of equations in matrix form back to regular equation form. Now remember, we're only going to be looking at systems with n equations and n unknowns, but this method actually does work for what we call rectangular systems, which have different numbers of equations and unknowns. So we've already seen that a linear system of equations can be written in AX equals B matrix form. We're now going to use what's called the augmented matrix, written as A and then a vertical line B, as a shorthand notation for that matrix equation. So we'll take it as given that there's a set of uh, unknowns in some vector X that we need to find. We're just going to write it as A given B. Now the augmented matrix is, is just a way of writing, it's just like writing the B vector at the end of A and you separate them with a vertical line. So if we had a matrix equation which was uh, say 1, 2, 3, 4 with unknowns X and Y and a right hand side of 5 and 6, we just write that as the augmented matrix 1, 2, 3, 4, vertical line 5 and 6 and we'd take it to mean the same thing. Now the only reason we're going to do that, it's just going to make it easier and a little bit shorter to write out when we start doing these Gaussian elimination steps. And a couple of definitions, upper triangular form. So the upper triangular form of an augmented matrix AB, we say that that thing is in upper triangular form when all of the elements below the diagonal, the main diagonal, are zeros. So if we just go back to that one that I showed you here, the main diagonal would be these one and four elements. So this is not in upper triangular form because we've got a three there. If we did, however, change that and it was a zero, then we'd have an upper triangular form augmented matrix. Now we use back substitution, as we saw a long time ago in a different video, to solve upper triangular systems. Because we can turn that bottom line back into an equation where we know that four times y is equal to six, so y is equal to 6 on 4, or 3 on 2 if you like. And then we can move back through the equations using those values we find to find new values in the solution, eventually getting all of the values. So that actually is back substitution. It's when you're given an augmented matrix that's in the upper triangular form, and we solve for the bottom variable, just like I did here, for y equals 6. Solve for the bottom variable, use that to get the next variable up, and then use both of those for the next variable up and so on until you've found all the values in the unknown vector x. So let's have a look at this example here. It says use back substitution to solve the following system of linear equations. So we're given a system of linear equations here. Now we couldn't immediately do that, couldn't immediately do back substitution on that, but what I'm going to tell you is that that system, if I applied some steps, is equivalent to, that's what I'm using that little thing there, it's row equivalent to if you like, this augmented matrix here. And now that one we can see if we look, there's the main diagonal, 5, 1 and 2, everything below that is a 0, so it's in upper triangular form. So we can use that back substitution idea on that one. So what we can do then, we start at the bottom row, we see we've got 0x, 0y, but 2z, 2z is equal to 4, turning it back into an equation. That tells us then that z is equal to 2. Now we can use that in the next row up. We move back up, hence back substitution. We've got 1y plus 3z is equal to 0, reading across that row. We know that z is equal to 2, so we can say that's equivalent to 1y plus 6 is equal to 0, or y is equal to minus 6. 
So we now know what y and z are equal to, and we can go back up to the final row, or the first row, I guess. We've got 5x plus 3y plus z equal to 2, or 5x. Now 3y is going to be minus 18, and z is going to be 2 again, and that's equal to 2. And finally, rearranging that, 5x is going to be equal to 18, so x is 18 on 5. So there we've got our three solution values, x, y, and z, uh, for the original set of three equations. x is 18 on 5, y is minus 6, and z is 2. So that's back substitution. But that all hinged on us having this matrix, augmented matrix over here, in upper triangular form. Now if I'd just immediately change that set of equations into matrix form, we wouldn't have upper triangular form. So we need to figure out how to get it from an original set of equations into a matrix, augmented matrix, which is in upper triangular form, so that we can use back substitution. And that's where Gaussian elimination comes in. Gaussian elimination is a process formed out of applying what are called elementary row operations. So operations on rows of a matrix. So we're going to apply these things, which are the equivalents in matrix form of rearranging equations, adding equations, and multiplying equations by numbers, the things you used to do in just regular algebra. So the elementary row operations are these three things, and only these three things. The three allowed operations are to multiply a row by a non-zero constant. So any constant you like for a specific purpose that we'll see soon. You can also swap two entire rows. So switch row one with row two, for example, change their positions. But you have to do the entire row. And the final one, the, the most complicated of them, is to add a constant multiple of one row to another row. You could just add two rows, or you could subtract two rows, or you could add a non, uh, non one or non zero constant multiple. Then, so Gaussian elimination then is the process to get our augmented matrix into upper triangular form. And the way I go about it is I always try to make sure I have a non-zero in the first diagonal. That's my first step. If I need to, I swap rows to get one there. That's the easiest way to do it. So non-zero in the first diagonal. Then I use that first row, I add multiples of it, multiples of the first row to all the other rows that I need to, so that I get zeros underneath that first diagonal. So everything in the first column under the first diagonal, I want it to be a zero. And I do that by adding multiples of row one. Then I move on to the second column. I make sure I've got a non-zero in the second diagonal. So it's kind of like the same step one, but moving to the second diagonal. And I swap rows if I need to. Don't swap with the first row, because that'll ruin your first column. Then I want to add multiples of the second row. So this is kind of just like step two, but I'm doing it with the second row. And I'm doing it to get zeros in all the second column elements below the second diagonal. So we're moving a column at a time, trying to get zeros under the diagonal, eventually getting an upper triangular form. So we continue it for all of the other columns that you need to until we get that upper triangular form that we want so that we can apply back substitution. All right, so let's have a go at a full example here. We're going to use Gaussian elimination and back substitution to solve this system of three equations in three unknowns. Now, if you like, you can try to write that out in full matrix equation form first, so the, the odd AX equals B form. But I'm just going to go straight to the augmented matrix form. I don't really need to worry about that first step because uh, we know that the X vector is going to be X, Y, and Z. So A augmented with B is going to be the coefficients. So we'll have 1, minus 1, 1, minus 1, 1, and 1, and 2, minus 3, 2. Then on the right-hand side, the right-hand side values 1, 2, and 0. Now, let's just remember what we're trying to do here. We're going to make sure we've got a non-zero in the first diagonal, and then use multiples of the first row to get zeros beneath that diagonal. So I can see I have a non-zero in the first diagonal, so I've done step one. I then want to use multiples of row one added to row two and to row three in order to get zeros in these two elements here under the first diagonal. So there we go. I'm just going to rewrite that matrix out again, that augmented matrix. I'm going to say it's row equivalent with that little squiggly line to the following matrix. I'm going to leave the first row alone because I've already got my diagonal as a non-zero. And then I'm going to say, how do I get a zero there using a multiple of this row? 
well that's pretty easy, minus one plus one is going to give me zero. So I'm going to say row two becomes the old row two plus row one. So I'm going to get zero, one plus minus one is zero again, one plus one is two, and two plus one is three. Now similarly I go to the third row and I want to add a multiple of the first row that will give me a zero in that first column element. So if I want to add a multiple of one to get zero there, it's going to have to be minus two lots of one. So I'm going to say row three becomes the old row three minus two row ones. So two minus two of those is zero like we wanted. Minus three minus minus two is going to be minus one. And then two take away two ones is again zero and zero take away two ones is minus two. Okay, so that's our first column done. We've done our first bit of Gaussian elimination, got a non-zero diagonal, and then use row operations to get zeros below it. So these are those row operations we're talking about. That's how I tend to write them out. So the next step we've got to do is to get a non-zero in the second diagonal. So we're going to start working on the second column. So I'm going to have to do a swap row. So I'm going to say that that is row equivalent to leave the first row alone because it's all fine. And I want to swap row two and row three. So I'm going to say row two swaps with row three. We have zero, minus one, zero, minus two, and zero, zero, two, three. Now jumping back, the next step would have been add multiples of the second row to other rows to obtain, obtain zeros below the second diagonal. So I would have wanted to get a zero here, but I've already got one. So I don't need to do anything. If I didn't have a zero there, I'd need to add a multiple of row two to get a zero there. But that's fine, we've already done it. So we'll move to the third column. Check that we've got a non-zero in that diagonal. Everything's fine. We've done our third column, and that's actually the end of the Gaussian elimination process. So we've now got our matrix in, as you can see, there's the diagonal. Zero is beneath it, so it's in upper triangular form. And I can go straight to the back substitution step. So back substituting, I can see I've got two z's equal to three, and that tells me that z is going to be equal to three on two, or one and a half. Then moving back to the second uh, row, I've got minus y, no z's, is equal to minus two. Well, that's easy, that's y is equal to two. And finally in the top, we've got x minus y plus z equal to one. So x minus y, so that's minus 2, plus z, plus 3 on 2, is going to be equal to 1, which finally says that x is equal to 3 on 2, if we just you know, simplify all of those. So there's our solution for our set of equations. x is 3 on 2, y is equal to 2, and z is 3 on 2. So you should be able to go back and check those by substituting into the set of equations, and all the equations should be true, just like normal uh, substitution and checking. So that's our solution there by Gaussian elimination and back substitution. So where to now? If you're looking in other texts, the usual story, check out any section that looks at Gaussian elimination and solving linear systems with Gaussian elimination and back substitution. Now remember that we'll just be looking at n by n systems. So sometimes in the textbooks they may look at non-square systems, but don't worry about that too much here. Read it if you like, just out of interest. Uh, make sure you're attempting the exercises from the worksheet and make sure that you're following through with that step-by-step -step process that's outlined here. And that's it though for Gaussian elimination and back substitution.